welcome back all as part of our uh, aws learning series we are in our day 7 session today where we are going to see about uh, s3 bucket the storage object storage in aws okay hopefully like uh, we have been using this for uh, almost like couple of days so far now so in our earlier session where we have uploaded the entire uh, website build file to s3 and we have downloaded using our ec2 and we have been able to successfully publish the website over the internet okay so let's try to understand few more important concept under s3 so let me uh, quickly create a bucket so let me create like sample okay sathvik hyphen bucket okay basically like buckets as i mentioned earlier it's like region specific resource so you need to specify your region so i am selecting a us east one okay so basically like we don't want to enable any acls okay we these things may be like little bit advanced so i don't want to confuse you guys too much in uh, acl and other policy things but let me try to explain as much as we can for today's session okay and again i am not going to open this for a public access because I don't want to get into like too much of inflows of requests. So we are going to block everything as a public access. Okay. Then the important thing, every bucket can be enabled for versioning. Okay. If you enable this bucket for versioning, what happens is like any changes or any upload of the same file will be treated as a new version. Okay. Even in case of uh, you, you want to check back your older versions. Yes, it will be still available for you to review. So basically, uh, it maintains the history of versions too. Okay, but again, uh, when you maintain history of your versions, it incurs your additional charges because it's again charge you for every version changes. Okay. Basically, how it uh, changes like kind of a delta changes. Basically, like it it internally has its own algorithm to calculate the delta changes and then accordingly it charges you. Okay, and then. Tax again, tax are nothing but to group or to identify the buckets uh, respectively, whether it's belong to which business unit or which particular business domain or whatever it is, right? So that's where like we go for a tagging. And the important concept comes here is like most of the time any enterprise, right? Any enterprise which uses AWS, uh, they really worry about the security part. Okay, how do I uh, secure my data which is getting stored because it's it's an object uh, based storage right where you will keep all your files like okay it can be your source file it can be your website uh, file or whatever the files you keep there how are you going to secure it so there are multiple options which aws provides where aws itself encrypts the data which is own uh, key okay or it, it says that okay you give me your key so that based on that i can encrypt okay or and it says like a kind of a dual method you also give your key, I also use my key to encrypt. Okay, that's what all this option says. The first option says server-side encryption with Amazon S3 managed. So basically that's the default option where Amazon manages the security and encryption method by its own key. Okay, if you select the second option, whereas you need to provide your key and your AR and everything. Okay, basically you need to create a key and then provide the AR and everything. Okay, that's our key. Basically we decide the key and we encrypt the data based on our key. So in case like if I want to rotate my key and everything, I need to take care of it my own. Okay. So by default option is server side encryption with uh, AWS. Most of the organization will go with their own keys. Okay. In my experience, I have never seen like dual uh, layer server side encryption till now. So let me go with the uh, default option. Then let's look at the advanced settings. So advanced settings like uh, we have like object lock. If you enable the object lock on the objects, that object will be like uh, marked for no delete or no edit. It will be like kind of locked. Only you can upload, but you cannot do any other changes. Okay, with this, like I think we have seen almost everything, but we are going all with the default options. So by this time, you are aware of like almost what are the each and every options in S3. Okay, let's move on to the creating a bucket. Okay, great. So now I have created a bucket. Let me go into my bucket. So when I go into my bucket, I see some other options, right? Properties, permission, metrics, management, access point. So let's come to that in few minutes later. Let me upload uh, some sample files to the S3. Okay, guys, ensure you do not upload any huge files because it incurs in the data transfer cost. Okay, whether you upload or download from S3. Okay, so just to be sure you don't upload anything. 
because you will be charged for that because whatever you use in s3 that will be charged okay let me add a simple file let me select my key pair file private key okay because as i use this private key for temporary uh, training purposes that's why i am doing it in real time we don't upload it to the s3 that's okay so now you need to understand few more things here so there is a note of caution here so from the aws console you can upload the maximum file size is of 160 gb okay again this is going to be an interview question okay where people tend to ask what is the maximum file which you can upload in s3 using a single operation okay so there will be a uh, question of this kind where you need to be very much clear because as i mentioned earlier too people does not allow you see basically the enterprises does not allow you to upload or download any files from s3 directly okay there might be few organization which is still allowing it but most of the enterprises does not allow and restrict you to use either cli or api based methods basically when i when we say api it will be done through your programming languages or request uh, things right? basically we do have sda sdk also where uh, you write a code in your java or php or in python and everything and you upload a file using a put operation and aws uh, cli okay yesterday we did right uh, copy yesterday we uh, copied a file from uh, s3 to your ec2 the same way you can even copy a file from ec2 to s3 so that's what they are recommending to use generally that's what we uh, even do in our enterprises okay so here the key point is that just understand when you upload any file from a console okay the maximum size allowed to you you is 160 gb okay that's the limitation which you can upload so more than 160 gb you are not allowed to upload it from your console it triggers an error okay let's uh, the next question hey kumar like now i have some uh, one terabyte of data or let's take for simplicity like i have a uh, uh, 500 gb file how do i upload to s3 bucket okay that's where like you have to use cli or sdk or apis so basically we will be exploring cli as our uh, preferred option to do it so in cli also there is an another restriction so in cli also for any put command in a put any copy command in a single copy you can do only 5 gb of file copy okay oh kumar then if we, if i can only do a 5 gb file copy then how can i upload 500 gb of file okay 5 gb is too less right so that's where uh, if you guys are from uh, any website uh, web designing background or web development background you might have heard about multi-part upload okay that's where like multi-part upload comes in so your huge file 500 gb file has been chunked into 5 gb of equal sizes and the upload will happen okay so that's basically is to reduce the uh, network basically you don't want to congest the network right? so that's why like we basically go for multi-part upload so when you use from cli there is no hard restrictions there but again the restrictions for cli it has a cap of 5 terabytes basically so it's very huge basically like 5 terabytes of uh, is a maximum uh, limit which you have uh, to upload using even multi-part okay if something is more than uh, 5 terabyte which i want to do basically you have to work with aws to establish some other mode of like direct connect or anything to upload that okay great with this let's uh, move on right so that's what i thought of saying it here so here it shows like what is the file you are uploading and the destination bucket which you are uploading and the destination details so it shows like whether your bucket is version enabled for us like the button is not enabled the encryption method which use and the object clock okay great so let's look at the permission basically it's block all the public access and owner preferred so this is the default option oh, bucket owner enforced is nothing but the default option where the bucket whoever is created the bucket he has all the privileges okay on the objects which is getting uploaded so that's the default option so then then important things comes in so many of your interview questions can come from this particular part where it says about something called storage classes so we need to really understand what is a storage class so in s3 there are storages defined based on the file access so how frequently you access the file based on that 
uh, S3 or AWS has categorized the storage classes. For example, usually all the files whatever you upload goes into a storage class called standard. Okay, which is nothing but frequently accessed data more than once in a month within millisecond access. Means that this will be like retrieved very immediately. If the file is stored under standard, it will be retrieved even very lesser than a millisecond of time. Okay, that's where like standard comes in and the data you upload in a standard uh, storage type of classes will be replicated in all the availability zones. Usually it will be greater than uh, three availability zone. Okay. It says like greater than or equal to right. So this is the number of available zone it can store and it can stay as much as you want. There is no any restrictions or anything. So, okay, as much as uh, time it can store there. Okay, that's a standard. So what is intelligent tiring? Okay, before you understand intelligent tiring, you need to understand standard IA. What is meant by standard infrequent access? So this one is standard frequent access. What is infrequent access? So basically, if you are uh, accessing the file, okay, either rarely, like once in a month or twice in a month, okay, you can categorize that particular file as standard IA. Okay, again, it has the same uh, conditions, like it can be on uh, greater than three availability zone, the data is replicated, but the condition is the, the file will be in this particular standard IA for 30 days. Okay, any files more than 30 days will be moved to the next tier. Or you can consider, you can move that to a next tier. Okay. Okay. Now, let's come into intelligent tiring. For example, if you are not sure, basically the name says that intelligent. If you are not sure whether uh, your file should be of standard or standard infrequently accessed, you can put that file into intelligent tiring where it decides okay it automatically decides based on the file access okay if the file is not accessed for last 30 days it moves to standard infrequently accessed tier automatically if the file has been frequently accessed it still keep the file in the standard uh, storage class okay that's what like say, intelligent tiring is all about okay then it comes see for example if you go to intelligent tiring it has like uh, again it gets stored on three availability zones Guys, again, you need to be very, very, very caution whenever you go for standard or intelligent tiring or standard intelligent tiring, your data is getting replicated in three availability zones. So you will be charged for everything because it's saved in three places. So all the three places you will be charged. Okay. So here is one zone intelligent, uh, sorry, infrequent access. So basically it's similar to your standard IA, but the only thing is that the data will not get replicated. It will be stored only in one availability zone. Okay, similar everything will be same as standard IA. So what is Glacier? So earlier we have only Glacier. So now we have Glacier Instant Retrieval, which is again similar to your uh, intelligent, uh, sorry, infrequent access. But only thing is that if you want to move any data to Glacier, it should have like minimum of 30 days. Again, it's stored in all the three uh, availability zones okay but they again in glacier instant retrieval again it's caused it can be retrieving in milliseconds okay now you guys will have a small question okay kumar like everywhere you see right okay in standard also i am getting millisecond access here also i am getting millisecond access so everywhere the uh, functionality does not change i am getting like uh, immediate data so how do i decide so you have to decide based on this factor so how long the data is going to store? Okay, if you are going to store your data of minimum 90 days, then you can go for it. If you want the data for more than 90 days, you can go for uh, this one. Okay, 180 days, you can go for this one. So basically, it's all like how frequently you access your data. Okay, so let's uh, think about any use cases, right? So let's go with an use case. So that's where you guys better understand. So, for example, hey Kumar, like uh, you are maintaining a web server, okay, as our use case, right? We are maintaining a web server. So, web server, HTTPD has its own log, okay? We will see that HTTPD.log, which has all the information about the server. So, for audit purposes, we retain that log and also for to understand 
what is going on to the server we will always maintain the log for like 30 or 40 days but assume that okay after 40 days what should i do with that log will it really useful maybe if auditor i want to check in future they might ask that question because like audit may happen in like once in a quarter or by by yearly maybe once in six months so if they want to cross check whether this particular user is authenticated to use this web server or something they might ask you to prove it using the log that's where we might need that log so what i can do i can push those kind of a logs to the glacier okay where i can put it like a flexible retrieval because we don't want to go into deep archive deep archive will be like for uh, very 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 older files because it will take an hours to get you the data so we'll go for a flexible retrieval where it gets in at least like a minute to hours okay so you have to decide what kind of a data it is what kind of a data i am pushing into the s3 bucket for example some data like okay uh, we will be like uh, using it for one day then after that it may not be even uh, really worth enough okay then those kind of data say it's better to delete it even like uh, putting into any other uh, storage classes right so you guys have to sensibly decide what needs to be done okay which storage class has to be used so based on that you can select there are one more important concept called a life cycle of s3 so how do i enable this process automatically for example when my log file storage days crossed 30 days let me move okay let me let me see that okay i have selected a standard so after 30 days if i want to move to standard ia okay if the log file is uh, almost 90 days how do i move it to deep archive or maybe flexible retrieval how do i decide it so there is certain concept called uh, life cycle of s3 i will explain in few more uh, minutes just hold on your breath there okay then it comes like server side encryption do i need to do any encryption we are not going with doing anything like that so these are like security like any additional checksums you want to validate whether the checksum of the uploaded file is equal to the uh, uh, file size and everything which i am not going to do for now yeah and again it's all like nfm metadata information so so these much details are there even for a single file which you are uploading okay you guys need to be like very very sure on like what is storage classes and everything because this is the one which defines like how your how long like your files are going to be stored in a particular storage area okay let's me upload this file okay great so now i have uploaded my file so now let's come here right so here you see all this file right so now right now like my file is in standard okay let me check other bucket properties okay what is the property so here it says like in which region i have created and what is my arn okay and what is the creation date whether my versioning is enabled or not and everything and the tags and default encryption whether i am i am going with aws encryption only i am not going with the kms which is nothing but like uh, my own key and here comes like uh, intelligent tiring archive so on based on what condition or based on what criteria i should say that okay uh, after uh, this many days uh, access i need to move this to this one something like that right so but basically i am in standard so i am not going to configure all these things now and server access logging okay it's basically disabled we are not doing anything with that and the cloud trail who logged into what and everything i do, do i need to really store those data i am not going to do who access the file and everything i am not enabling that okay and again even notification for example so if some file is getting uploaded so is that someone who needs to be notified so in that case i will configure this even notification okay there are many things which we can do probably we can check maybe in our documentation if really when and there it's really needed okay basically uh, this uh, classic use case for s3 whenever you want to host any website you just uh, enable the static website and you upload your uh, build file to the s3 and you generate a url okay and then publish that url so basically for static website hosting which i am not going to demo it for even today's session it will be maybe in future we will see that okay these are the basic properties which we can do with uh, s3 bucket then again permissions part basically we are like uh, not enabling for any public access so it might not have much more details to for us to see here okay basically if you guys are aware of a access control list 
in Linux at least you will understand a little bit of this but we will cover this also in detail in our upcoming sessions okay basically access control is something like okay if I am a owner in just to give you a overview if I am a owner if I want to grant access to someone else I can use access control is to do that okay in with AWS terms it work across accounts also okay but we will see the detail a session maybe uh, about access control list when we uh, almost nearing our end of this uh, particular uh, AWS session when you know about all the services right so you better understand that concept during that time even that makes sense of uh, explaining that okay then metrics again I don't want to see about it like what is the uh, usage and everything right how much I have used and everything so here comes the important part <coughs> so management right so I was explaining you about the life cycle rule of S3 so this is going to be an another important interview question if you are going for an AWS uh, interview okay they will ask you like how do you configure an S3 uh, life cycle policy because I said right if you keep on using your standard you are going to you are going to pay a huge amount to AWS so you should create a life cycle rule so that it automatically moves the older files or unwanted files either to the lower uh, storage classes or if the files is not even required you better delete it for example the files which I have said right either the log files for example if the log file you assume that okay the log files after 90 days it's not even really required either you create an expiration rule okay basically there are two actions we configure in uh, S3 one is like a transi uh, transition action so transition action as the name defines right you move from one storage class to other storage class where you are ensuring that you are storing the sorry you are reducing the storage cost okay so that's where like uh, transition actions means that okay there is one more policy or one more uh, thing we will really consider when we configuring the life cycle policy is called expiration rules or expiration actions so what is that expiration action for example today I have got one uh, data file let's assume that daily I will get a data file so today I got one data file okay tomorrow do I really need to maintain this data file no I can simply delete this out because like tomorrow data file is again going to be a full file which I can use that for my processing even though I have not processed I can even simply remove it okay so those kind of life cycle policies can be configured uh, for S3 bucket let me show one simple example so how do you configure like life cycle uh, policy okay create a life cycle rule okay so let me say like okay move it to glacier sorry move it to uh, IA and then to glacier so basically what I am saying first move the files to infrequent access after that then move to glacier oh you know right glacier is nothing but very least uh, access storage okay so now it says choose the rule scope whether I need to apply this rule to all the files in the bucket or certain files in the bucket so I will say apply this object no I will say one or more filters basically I will apply this to certain uh, files so what I am saying I am going to apply it for star dot log so the files with ends with log okay so if I want to define it by a tag basically if I want to uh, apply this particular life cycle on the files which is having only this particular tag I can go with this okay is there any size I need to maintain like if the file size is like okay of this particular size do this action or else no, not required so in those cases I will go with this for in our use case I am not going to consider anything of this I am just going to move if particular days limit is crossed so what action I am going to do life uh, this is I was explaining right life rule action basically you do transition or expiration so uh, transition is nothing but move current from one storage class to other okay this is also non current versions so if versions enabled you go with the non current version okay I am basically I am going with the current version so this one expiration rules comes with this particular option expire the current version of the object means that it will delete and again permanently delete non current versions because like when I delete I can delete both the current version and its older history also okay basically if it's like multi very huge file you can select this file uh, this options too okay now 
as I select move current version of an object between storage for uh, for our use cases my bucket itself is non version enabled so I really uh, least bother about non current versions okay so for me either I move or I expire or delete okay so now I am going to move what I am going to move Two storage classes for transition. So first I am going to move into infrequent access. So after how many days I am going to move? If the object is not accessed or not used, I, I can decide, sorry, based on the creation date. Okay, if the object is created before 30 days, then move that object to standard IA. Okay, then I am saying move that to flexible retriever for glacier after 180 days. So what happens is, so it just gives a note, I am saying okay, because I am moving to glacier, right, it says like, uh, if you want to still even reduce uh, that, you go for deep archive, that's what I am saying. So my, I am going to do only two operations, so what I am saying, if the object is not used, uh, sorry, if the object creation date is like more than 30, move it to standard IA, if the object creation date is more than 180, after this one, then move it to flexible. Uh, glacier flexible okay now whatever i put it here right i can see in the kind of a flow chart here so it says on day 0 to day 30 the object will be in here this object uploaded status so after day 30 it moved to standard ia after 180 days okay it moved to glacier flexible which is nothing but formerly glacier okay as we don't have any non current uh, versions so i don't have anything defined here Okay, I am working only on current version. You guys understand? Basically, this is the rule I am defining. So, after how many days, what needs to be happen? After 30 days, move the object to standard IA. After 180 days of time, then you move to glacier. So, this is a simple rule. If I create this rule, any object which is of older than 30 days will get moved. Okay. Great. Let me delete this. Okay, so under management, let's go back to under management. So if I, I have deleted the life cycle rule, if I am not deleted, it will be here. So is there replication rules if I want to replicate? See replication is different from life cycle rule. Replication is kind of a backup. You take a backup of it. Okay. Okay, and again inventory, which I have really not used so far. Okay, and access points again access point and uh, sorry end points we will look at after some time so that you better understand right now we are going to access to using the direct method so i am not going to really worry about access points or uh, <coughs> end points for now okay i think i have explained pretty much uh, details and also i have warned you what are the places you might expect an interview question with regards with S3. Okay. Hope I made it very clear. Let me delete these files because uh, everything will get charged or else. Please. I found delete, I guess. Okay. Okay, I have deleted the file. Let me go back to the bucket and delete the bucket also. Pay attention with uh, little caution. If you are using a uh, bucket, you will be charged for what you are using. Okay, so whatever the things I upload or whatever things I uh, transfer using CLI, I get charged on that. Okay, so don't use big files for testing. Okay, I am, if I am using, maybe I might be paying out my charges. Okay, don't try with uh, any bigger file or anything. If you are trying with, just try with small file so that you will be not charged for anything. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, if you like this video and if you are uh, at least learning a single bit of uh, new information, please uh, don't forget to subscribe or like my channel and also share with your friends too. Thanks. Thanks for watching.